Why is learning science, engineering, technology, and math so important? Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Laurel Hess and this is Comcast Newsmakers. Our topic today is Uplift Inc. Here to discuss it with us is its founder, Ida Bird Hill. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. What exactly is Uplift Inc.? We are an educational advocacy firm. What we try to do is to educate parents and their families on how to improve the education from their children, not only just at school, but at home. Um, education really is a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week venture, and parents need to be engaged the whole 24 hours and seven days with their kids. So your group is out there sort of helping out and doing this uh, all year long in, in a variety of ways through all kinds of different programs. Uh, one of the ways that you have uh, tried to get folks involved and get the message across was by creating a brand new board game called Fluke. Uh, what is it? How does it work? And, and, and what are you doing with it right now? Well, Fluke is a, a the board game is called Fluke, the wealth building game of accidental inventions. And one of the reasons why we created the game is that science the students often ask, why do I need to learn science, technology, engineering, and math? And usually we don't really give them good Because you've got answer. a calculator, so why do you have to learn all that? Yeah, why do you? <laughs> but the real reason is in the 21st century, um, the corporate America strategy has been intellectual property. It has been the, the war of patents copyrights and trademarks. But in order to begin to get into that strategy, you have to do something basic. It's called inventing. But a lot of times we think that inventing happens by the mad scientists that you see in the lab. And that's not always the case. A lot of billion dollar inventions are actually accidents. And we don't think about them. We use them every day, like the post-it note, which is my favorite, would die without it. it, was created by accident. And it's a billion dollar, what we call a billion dollar fluke. Um, so what we're hoping is that by students playing the game and having exposure to these billion dollar flukes, that maybe it get them into the activity of inventing so that they can join the 21st business strategy as well. So you are making learning and education fun through this game and you'd like to spread the word and make it fun for everyone. I know you have like a, a competition, a tournament of sorts uh, beginning in May where folks, can they go online and play the game? Do they have to, how do they get the game? How do they play and how do they take place in this tournament? Well, initially they would register online in May of 2012 and then the actual competition begins sometime in September and it was, parts of it will be electronic other parts of it will be an actual tournament where they would come and play the physical board game. But we're asking people to start registering now in May so we can kind of see how many face-offs we're going to be having when we start in September of 2012. And if folks, uh, that's one way that folks can play the game, but if folks uh, think that this sounds interesting, they'd like to introduce their kids to it, uh, hopefully maybe pretty soon, if you're lucky, you may have this, uh, this board game on store shelves someday? We're hoping. I mean, our goal is to try to get it on the shelves by July. Um, just recently, we entered the board game into a competition called Get on the Shelf that was sponsored by Walmart to see if we could get on the shelf of Walmart Corporation. And right now, the game ranks 24 out of 90. And so we're steadily moving up the chain. We're trying to get to number one in that category. Um, but we'll see what happens when the competition ends April 3rd. So obviously this is all just centered around trying to get young people interested in uh, inventing and thinking about what they want to do. Uh, and that's really how your whole organization started, with something called uh, Family Fun Nights. Is that something that, uh, that you still do, and what are those all about? Yeah, we still do those, and right now we do them in, in individual schools. Right now we've been in about 40 Detroit public schools and a couple suburban schools. And what those are are events that are fun with an academic twist. Uh, because what we're hoping is that people will walk away looking at learning is not a drag. It really can be fun. It doesn't always have to sit at a desk and learn. You can do some fun activities and learn. And so we're hoping that families walk away after they've played with each other and say, hey, we can do that at home. And they continue it because it improves the, st the children's academic progress. The best way of learning is when you're learning and you don't really know you're learning. That is the best way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's, and, that's, and that's what we're hoping that people get across. You know, have fun. And then your children may not know that they're learning, but they're picking up a lot. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Sounds awesome. And uh, Fluke is the name of the game. Yes. And uh, folks can uh, uh, hopefully go online. We'll get that website out there to, to get involved in this online tournament beginning in May. Thanks again. Thank you so much. For more information on today's topic, you can head to upliftinc.org. Today's Comcast Newsmaker was Ida Bird-Hill, the founder of Uplift Inc.